click on that or use this code, take the little survey to help one of our business classes that actually starts a business each semester is doing market research for the business, for the products they're going to sell. And this just helps them complete that research. And with that, it'll be my privilege now to introduce Colette Ganell. She is a co-founder with her sister-in-law of Sensi. Sensi, you may have heard of this company. I'm going to let her go ahead and do the introduction to the company. But she and her sister-in-law began working on this idea when they thought, wouldn't it be nice if there was a safe, simple way to scent the space around them? And what they developed was a wickless alternative to the typical flame candles that people use, had been using, to scent their homes and their offices. Since then, they've expanded into many other areas. Colette is here today with her husband, Greg. So, and also, many of you might know Jake. He was an instructor here at Snow College. He's also her son-in-law now. He wasn't when he was an instructor here. <laughs> Remind me of your wife's name. Cri Carissa is Colette's daughter. She also has four other daughters. She's a mother of five. And shortly after starting this company, she did something that most entrepreneurs dream of doing. That is harvesting your investment. So some people start a lifestyle business just so that they have something to give themselves a little bit of work. But many entrepreneurs and most entrepreneurs want to harvest their investment. That means you put in the idea, the ingenuity, the blood, sweat, and tears, and you get it off the ground, and then you sell it if you can, and harvest what you've put into it. And so she was able to do that successfully, but she's still with the company even after doing that. So she kind of got the best of both worlds here. I'll let her go ahead and tell that story, but just to update you on where the company is now, 13 years after they had this idea, since he has expanded to more than 1,019 employees, they've received the success award from the direct selling organization Inc. Magazine called Sensi America's fastest growing consumer product company and ranked them 19th overall in their annual list of the 500 fastest growing companies in America. Will you please welcome Colette Gunnell. <laughs> Thank you so much. Wow, I am so excited to be here and um, such an honor to get to meet all of you, especially I, I've told the story places, usually it's with um, Sensi Consultants, and so this is super fun to be able to talk to people who are wanting to um, explore more about entrepreneurship and creating your own business, and super excited to be here. Okay, um, so I'm gonna just start out here, and I wanna tell you first the, the kind of basic Sensi story, like how we got it started, um, me and my sister-in-law were both stay-at-home moms. Like he said, I have five girls, and uh, we just were, were home. And uh, my sister-in-law had watched the Millionaire Moms episode on Oprah. And it was the baby Einstein videos. And she was like looking at these moms and thought, OK, if these girls can come up with an idea, then why can't I? They're just ordinary women, right? And so she had actually been praying for like a whole year to try to come up with some idea. She wanted something where she could just be able to be a mom but have some kind of income at home. And she was kind of looking for um, an idea. I, on the other hand, just always loved jarred candles. I, I had candles going all the time. I loved my house to smell good. But with the little girls around, I started worrying about the flame and the smoke and the soot of a jarred candle. When you would burn down that jarred candle, I always wondered, like, where did all that wax go? And if any of you have been around where there's a lot of candles being burned, you can move a picture off the wall and tell where the picture was. That, that soot and stuff is going on the walls and ceiling. That kind of bothered me. So I had been in, in, kind of investigating and experimenting with different um, ways to burn candles. And back then, they had um, these little flat coffee mug warmers. And uh, so I would buy the little coffee mug warmer and buy the jarred candle and put it on there. It would uh, melt down, uh, or wouldn't melt away, but the, it, it liquefied and the scent would come out. The problem with the um, coffee mug warmers got really hot. 
And so, and then the wick would fall down in and the scent would be gone and like a few days later the jarred candle was, was done. But I felt like it was a little safer than um, having the flame. So anyway, uh, I had gone to this lunch in July of 2003 and it was with my sister-in-law, it was my mom's birthday and all the family and sisters were there and for my mom's birthday I gave her one of these um, jarred candles on a, on a warmer. And we just got talking about candles and my sister-in-law Kara that had been praying for this idea was at the lunch and I mentioned to her about a neighbor that um, I knew. She would take her jarred candle and put it in a bag and then break the glass on it and then she would pull out the, the chunk of wax and cut it up in little pieces and would melt that in her little potpourri. She had the, one of those little potpourri, looked like a mini crock pot thing. And I had mentioned that at this lunch. I didn't say anything about it besides that was a lot of work to go to to break the glass and and do all that, but for my sister-in-law, who had been looking for an idea, she had this light bulb moment, and she was like, if somebody's gonna go to all the work to break the glass and do all of that, then why don't we come up with a candle where they can just melt the, the wax chunks in a warmer and take away all that hassle? So 10 o'clock that night, I get this phone call, and she's like, hey, you know, when you were saying about what your neighbor did and we were talking about candles she's like i have been looking for an idea for a whole year and she said would when she said when when uh, we were talking about it the words came in her mind kara this is your business and she said do you want to start a company with me selling wax chunks and warmers and i'm like let's do it <laughs> so that's kind of the beginning um but like i said we were both stay-at-home moms um, Kara had a little bit of college education. I really didn't. I got married young. And um, so we're like, hey, we have this idea and we want to start this company, but how? Like, what do we do? So we knew we needed a business license and we knew we needed to name the company. And we knew we needed money. And I'm like, do you have money? And she's like, no, do you have money? No. <laughs> so um, we were really like, hey, how are we going to do this? Um, so let me flip here. Basically, we, we had this idea, but we were like, we don't have money. We also had a lot of people saying, candles, why would you start a candle business? Like, candles are a dime a dozen. They're everywhere. Like, why, you know, how do you think that'll be successful? And uh, I, I don't know if you've ever come up with an idea or something you're excited about, and beware. There's people that are going to, like, say it's not very very cool idea. Um, but there was a lot of things against us, but what we did have was this huge dream. This was our original um, Scentsy logo, and um, really, truly, we thought Scentsy is going to be the hottest new thing in candles. Like, we were determined, and when people would say negative things about it, it really just made us all the more determined to make it work. Um, so, let's see here. We decided that we were going to make this work and reach for the stars, and I loved this quote. All who have accomplished great things have had a great aim and fixed their gaze on a goal which was high, one which sometimes seemed impossible. And um, so looking at our situation, these moms with no money, no idea what to do, um, a lot of people would have said it's impossible to, to start a company. But we used the resources that we had. I had a neighbor who was a design artist, and we went to her and kind of told her um, what we wanted to do. And uh, she created the original um, Scentsy logo for us. Um, and to, to tell you how we named it, too, we knew we needed a name. Um, we had been trying to think of different things, and with the little bits of wax that, that you know, go in the warmer, we were thinking like a bit of sense or perfect sense, or um, we had tossed around a bunch of different names, but my sister-in-law was in on the computer typing in different forms of the word scent, and she yelled from the other room, what about Scentsy? And I'm like, oh my gosh, like we both knew instantly that was the name. And um, really it has worked out good because it lends to several different scented products rather than, you know, just bit of scents. Anyway, so that's how we uh, came up with the name. And then 
we started investigating. Okay, so um, we looked at all these different kind of warmers. We knew about the crock pot warmers. I knew about the coffee mug warmers. They got really hot. Um, and we found actually this style of warmers and I looked on the bottom of it and we called the company and I said, hey, you know, we really want to, to get some of these warmers from you. And he was like, oh, you can have all you want of those. Like, those are old, like nobody uses those anymore. He said, people used to put potpourri and water in them and let them simmer. And he's like, but nobody does that anymore. So we said, okay, well, you know, do you care if we change them into our own boxes? And he's like, you do whatever you want with them. Like he, he wanted to get rid of them. So we're like, yes, because the cool part is, is inside was a 25 watt light bulb. And what we found with the 25 watt bulb is it was warm enough to melt the wax, but it didn't get so hot. And so it made the scent last longer. So like you think of water on warm or water on boil, you know, the water on boil is going to go faster. Well, that's the same with, um, with the Scentsy. Um, then on the wax, we got investigating and we found out that there's pillar wax that, that is like a, a like a tall um, candles and, um, I can't think of the name, like candlesticks and things that aren't in a container are made out of. And then there's container wax. And at that time, nobody had ever done container wax not in a container. So it's the jarred um, candle wax. And we said, well, let's take that kind of wax that can hold a lot more scent and pack it with as much scent as it can hold, ditch the wick, and make it so that it can go in these warmers. And so we found... Um, the, we, we like started putting all the scents with the warmers. We found this little cute lady that made candles and we went to her and said, hey, can you help us? And we first started out asking her to pour them in an ice cube tray because all we really wanted was little bits, right? <laughs> so we, we took them to her and she's like, you want me to pour wax in an ice cube tray? Okay, and you're gonna pay me for that? <laughs> so when we got them back, we're like, okay, this smells really good. and is awesome, but it didn't look very good. Um, and so we found these bead organizers. Oh, really quick on this slide. This is um, the makeup bag that was my sister-in-law's that we um, was our inspiration for our boxes. And these are our first run of the, the little boxes. We were really, we felt like the packaging was super important and we wanted it to have like a gift ready look and um, a really quality look and feel. Um, so, when we didn't do the ice cube trays, we found these bead organizers that you store beads in. And I thought, this will be perfect because we can like fill it up with wax and bang them out. Literally, I went to Michael's and found the bead organizers. And um, we had her pour them in there and they, they, you would have to bang them pretty hard, but they would slide out and then we would shrink wrap each individual bar and made a little label. And that's where, those were the original Scentsy bars. That's where that kind of came from. Um, okay, so we had our warmer with the 25 watt light bulb, paired it with the highly scented wax, and this was Scentsy, our new idea. Now we had to set up shop in the unfinished part of our basement. We really didn't have money to have any kind of a facility to, um, to uh, start, start it. So anyway, we, it, the basement was unfinished. We divided half of it off, had uh, the little uh, baby gate in between where the kids could play. And then we would um, come and label and, and uh, bang out the wax. We thought we had a lot of inventory. We were super excited, but as you can see, <laughs> it was super easy to, to take inventory. Um, and this was our high-tech labeling system. We put all the labels for all our bars crossed with PVC and some rope. This was my husband's invention. And you can see all of the um, bead organizers that we would fill up and it was awesome. We would haul in these big garbage sacks to the lady full of these bead organizers and, and we named the bars and, and um, picked out which oils we wanted and she helped us pour them in there and then we would come home and bang them. And when they were ready to go, they went in these plastic storage bins so that we could um, pull out which bars were, were which. There were a few things that were in our favor with starting Scentsy. 
Um, the candle industry is actually a $3.2 billion a year industry. So it was proven. It wasn't like, you know, we were coming up with this brand new concept. People love candles. People love their houses to smell good. Um, but there are over 18,000 house fires every year started by a burning candle. And so Scentsy provided a safe alternative where people could have this awesome smell in their house, but they didn't have to worry about their pets or their kids or you know, anything like that. Because with the 25 watt bulb, you can put your finger right in the wax and it's just warm. It, it doesn't, not hot enough to burn you. So no wick, no flame, no smoke, no soot, um, but still have that awesome smell. So we have this idea, we have our bars, our boxes, we're like super excited. Now, how do we market it? Who, who do we go to? So we tried out retail. Um, we put up a little display and had our boxes and the bars in a, a retail store and nobody knew what a wickless candle was. Everyone would like walk by it and had no idea what it was. So we realized we need to have this person-to-person -person conversation and explain what Sensi is. So we, I had done some other party uh, plan companies, mostly as a hobby, just to you know get the products for a cheaper price. So I kind of understood a little bit about direct sales. And so we actually had eight um, consultants that said, hey, we'll help you, you know, and we'll do home parties. And Kara and I did home parties. And um, that worked really well because it had the person-to-person -person contact. We also got into some fairs and shows. And we set up some little booths and, you know, dressed up. And we would, hey, you know, have you heard of Scentsy? And nobody, I had people ask me, like, is that cheese? You know, like, nobody knew what it was. So in the beginning, it was a lot of just, you know, helping people understand um, what this, this wickless um, idea was. Um, it was, let me just flip to my notes here. It was at, um, well, let me first give you a quick little timeline. Um, so the birthday lunch with my mom was in July of 2003. We had our first set of boxes and we were ready to um, start marketing it and everything. Uh, by that October, we got into some fairs and shows and it was March of 2004 that we were um, doing the fall home and or the spring home and garden show at Southtown Expo. And we had our little booth set up like this and we were like feeling so professional and everything. And across from us was another booth um, that was owned by a man named Orville Thompson. And they were selling these uh, three-in-one game controller handheld video games. And literally, their display was like a TV. It had a, a game controller plugged into the TV, and he had hired his 14-year-old niece to stand there and demo the video game. And um, a little background about Orville, um, he actually had come into this show. His company before this was uh, called Event Sales, and he would go to all these different fairs and shows and get like 10 booths and sell chamois and brooms and mops and different things um, in each of these different booths. Well, 9-11 happened, and he had gotten all of this inventory. Nobody came to fairs and shows, um, and basically he found himself like $500,000 in debt and was thinking he was gonna have to declare bankruptcy. So he comes to this show and he goes to the show promoter and he gives her a check to pay for his booths. And he says, you know, I'm gonna give you this check but I want you to know it's gonna bounce, like it's not good. But if you'll let me put my you know, product in, at the end of the show I'll come and buy back the check with, with, a, um, with cash. So she led him into the show and um, anyway, we're at our booth and we're, you know, doing good and keeping busy. And um, I, had, I sat down to take a little, eat a little lunch and I sat on this little bench and Orville had just happened to come around to check on this booth where his niece was. I had seen the video games across and I'm like, this would be super fun for my girls. But like I said, I didn't have money. Um, I forgot to tell you, Kara and I both opened up a credit card. That's how, <laughs> how we funded the beginning of Scentsy, which I wouldn't really recommend that. But um, anyway, we, we get our logo and everything, which we thought was gonna be about 
$2,000. We get our bill from the design artist and we were $30,000 that by the time we got everything created. So I really wanted one of these video games, but I'm like, oh, I don't have the money to, to get this. Maybe he'll do a trade, right? So this is going on in my mind. I sit on the little bench, I'm eating my lunch, and Orville comes around, and he sits on the bench next to me. And I strike up this conversation, and I'm like, hey, tell me about the video games. Like, does it have Frogger on there? And, you know, I'm just asking him. And, um, I, I'm thinking, okay, this is a guy, is he gonna want Sensi, but I really wanna do a trade. So I asked him, are you married? And he said, yeah. And I said, oh, you totally need to take one of these Sensi's home to your wife. And he's like, well, tell me about it. I'm like, oh, cause I really wanted the video game, right? So I'm like, okay, they're the hottest new thing in candles. They're wickless, flameless, smokeless. And I bring him over, I'm having him smell all the scents. And he's like, yeah, yeah, I'll work out a, you know, for sure I'll work a trade. And, then he goes back and sits at the bench. I go back and Kara and I are working the booth. And literally, you could just see his mind turning as he's watching Sensi. Well, a few minutes later, he comes over and he's like, so how much would you guys want to like sell this? And we're like, oh, we're not for sale. You know, like this was brand new, right? We'd only had it for a couple months. But one important thing about being an entrepreneur is when you have, like he was saying, when you have an idea, you have to know your strengths and know when it's time to bring somebody else in that can actually help you get it to that next level. For Kara and I, we're these moms, we loved it, we loved the product, we were having lots of fun, but we had to get to a point where we were recruiting our husbands, like they'd come and help us bang these out and they were getting creative, getting shop vacs and trying to suck them out. And, you know, we were, we were trying to keep up with the demand. And that March, our sales were $20,000. So we knew, okay, this is a, a cool idea. Like it does take us telling other people about it, but when they know about it, they, they love it and they're coming back for more. It's a consumable product, which was awesome because, you know, they had to keep calling us for, for more bars. But we were pretty uh, in the basement. That was, you know, we didn't have a lot of room to grow. So anyway, we're like, well, we don't really know this Orville guy, but sounds like kind of a cool idea to be able to, you know, have somebody help us take it to the next level. And so we partnered on a show with him in Seattle and um, he paid for the booth. We brought up our inventory and every day he's like, okay, like this is super cool. But like I said, he was $500,000 in debt, right? So how would he have the money to like, come and say, okay, we want to just buy this from you, right? So really, it was super cool for us because we were able to work out a royalty agreement that would go over the life of the company that would, you know, continue buying it over time. And um, then we were also able to become consultants and have a team and a downline, which has been super fun too. Um, okay, so I think I told you some of this, eight consultants, March, our sales were 20,000. People loved the concept. We wanted to be moms, wanted to get it to the next level. On May 1st of uh, 2004, Orville and Heidi came up to um, our house in Centerville and they picked up all the inventory. We um, created a, con a contract that totally worked well for both of us. And this is our three-way handshake. That's Heidi in the background. She, this is a really cool part of the story. She is super shy, and now she's the president of Sensi, and she is amazing. And to see her come from, you know, this hiding in the picture to um, on stage and, and having so much fun with Sensi, that's been a really cool story in and of itself. Um, some people want it to happen, some people wish it would happen, but other people make it happen. And as an entrepreneur, that's our job, is to make things happen. Orville and Heidi, this is, it went from my basement to the sheep farm. They had an old um, ocean container that was sitting on the sheep farm. And it was really funny, because Kara and I never, we were like, how come he's not inviting us up there to come see the new home office? <laughs> that's because they would open these doors and the mice would run out. And um, anyway, super crazy. 
Um, but they swung for the fence, and where they were in so much debt, this was really their way to get out of, of debt as well. And so they were determined to make it work. They had their little kids in the, in the home office trying to help them, and there's pictures of them with the bar stickers all over their face. I mean, they just became part of it. They, they practiced their piano there, and um, it, it was really cool how hard they have worked. But they hit a home run with Sensi, and it, this is the um, new home office, and um, this is some pretty cool facts about Sensi. The home office is on a 63-acre campus with seven buildings totaling over 603, 603 256,000 square feet. My brain is not working. Anyway, it's huge. Um, there's also six other distribution centers around and in other countries so that um, most of the, the wax and everything is manufactured in Meridian, Idaho, and then it's distributed and can get to the consultants around. There's over a thousand employees that are, work at the home office on the campus, supply chain, um, all the people who design the warmers. It, it's amazing. And if you ever go to Boise, Meridian area, go get a tour. It, it's so cool. Um, a cool thing is you could fill eight school buses every day with the number of people who are joining Sensi every day. Um, 161 bathtubs full of wax are uh, poured, which equals about 340,000 bars made every day. Um, 16 semi-trailers filled and shipped per day, totaling 16,000 boxes packed and shipped every day. Sensi is big, and what's very cool is now, most people know what Sensi is. We don't have to like, okay, you know, tell them this isn't cheese, this is wax. <laughs> um, a cool thing about Sensi, this was one of our first leader meetings. You can see Orville and Heidi there in the front, and this was like some of the, the people weren't even directors yet, but um, just some of the leaders of, of Sensi. And we had this meeting, and um, in the, next to the girl in the black jacket it was the lady who came and did a training for us. Her name was Christy Northrup. And we did this training, I mean, this little tiny group of people in this meeting, and Christy came up to me after, and she said to me, there is something special about Sensi. And she said, I see a day where you will have a convention and you'll have flags placed all around the room that represent the different countries. <laughs> Sorry, the sense he's in. And I'm like, really? You think so? Like, this little idea of ours, you think that we could be in other countries? Like, how cool would that be? Sensi is international, which is so exciting. We are in over 10 different countries, and it, it's just like, Seriously, people will say, like, did you ever imagine that your little idea would turn into this? And it seriously is so rewarding. The cool thing to me is Sensi isn't just about wax and warmers and making people's houses smell good. Sensi seriously has become a tool for people to gain confidence, to learn how to do hard things. People who were very shy to, you know, have are now doing trainings and team meetings and, and things like that. But it also has become a way for them to earn an income that they can do, they can do the things that they really want to do in their life. Um, Sensi is set up as a direct sales company. That's the business model. And so the cool part about it is people can join for $99. So, um, you know, a lot of times when people start a business and they have to do what Kara and I did at the beginning and what Orville and Heidi have done with building the whole business, consultants can join for $99 and they get really everything they need to start a business. Um, everybody has the same opportunity. This is my next slide. Benefits of direct sales model. No store to open, no hours, no set hours. People on your team, you get people on your team that Sensi pays, you don't pay. Um, every person has the same opportunity starting. The sky is the limit with your pay and work you put in is rewarded. You can earn free trips. You're able to bless other people with the opportunity and you learn how to do hard things and you grow personally. 
This is a cool fact for you guys as um, entrepreneurs. Um, by 20, 2030, millennials will be 75% of the workforce out there. And they've done a study and asked millennials questions, and they asked about their career, career goals. 66% say they would like to start or own their own business. And really, it, I mean, with, it's been a huge change in our life to be able to set our own hours, work when we want, you know, all that kind of thing. So it's very cool and exciting for you as entrepreneurs because that's really what we're turning to. And a tip of advice for you, um, so much is done on social media right now. <laughs> and really, if, if you have any kind of a business, if you know how to market that through social media, um, that is going to become a huge tool for you. So. Um, this is a picture up, up at the home office. They had the big Scentsy logo that hung in the office there. Um, but my advice is to just find your dream, find what you're super excited about, whether you create it, whether you join into another company, um, but work for it. I think a lot of times people think like, oh, I'm going to do this and it's going to be, you know, I'm going to get rich quick and, you know, be done with it. But seriously, it took a ton of hard work and determination, but the key is to never giving up. So find what you're super excited about and then be willing to go for it. This is um, one of my favorite slides here at the end. Uh, my husband, Greg, who's right here, um, he worked for a company, Blue Cross Blue Shield, for over 20 years. And um, one day he went into his boss, it was in 2009, so since he started 2003, so a few years after, he went into his boss and told her, I, I want to retire. And she looked at him and said, like, you're too young to retire. You can't retire. And he says, well, then I want to resign. And she's like, what, your wife's little candle business? <laughs> and I'm like, yes, his wife's little candle business. <laughs> So that has been super fun since 2009. Um, we have gotten to work together and it's been my favorite thing ever. We, we have so much fun and we do work hard. So kind of my um, part of it is I, I stayed on as a, a Sensi consultant when we sold and um, I have a team, our team name is the Stellar Stars Foundation team. And uh, I have like over 30,000 people on my team and I do trainings and we do team meetings. We have so much fun. Um, I still do fairs and shows. If you come down to Southtown Expo, I'm still there working the booths and um, we, we seriously have so much fun. And Greg has been a huge part, really all of my family. My, my little girls have all grown up with Sensi and with Carissa here, um, it's been super fun. This is a picture of us just this last weekend. We were um, doing the fall home show there and um, she actually um, has signed up to sell Sensi. She's a director. She's also a student and um, just got married and it's been super fun. Sensi has given her the um, opportunity and flexibility to be able to pay for school um, while she um, is still being, you know, at home. She can work it from home. When they first got married, they lived up in uh, Bear Lake for a while, and she was able to totally work from there, too. So um, it's been really fun and rewarding for me to be able to work with, um, with my husband and now my daughter, and hopefully they'll all want to sell Scentsy. <laughs> um, so that's kind of the Scentsy story um, from, from me, and I would love if anybody has questions or if there's anything I can answer. <laughs> How long did it take you to make back your initial investment? That's a really good question. How long did it take for us to make back the original investment of the $30,000? So um, when they came to pick up all of the inventory, uh, he did scrape together like 5000 or something that he gave us originally and then um, over the next several months, he made payments until the, um, until the 30000 was gone. It was kind of a crazy story with that because my husband, like, okay, we're, we have 
you know, $30,000 on credit cards and he's thinking, oh boy, could I sell my truck? Like, you know, what, what would I do? So that was kind of a scary situation, but we could see that since he was, you know, kind of doing well besides that. So it took probably six or seven months um, for that initial um, money to come back. So <laughs> good question. Thank you. So when was it the, how did we know when the right time w was to sell the company? Um, so really for us, it was super fast because it hadn't even been a year. Um, and because we, the idea was in July and, you know, when he, we met him in March and then sold in April. But um, really kind of back to like knowing your strengths of, as an entrepreneur, like it was crazy. Our starter kit, <laughs> we had these eight little consultants, but they like got every bar in their starter kit. Like we, the business mind of it was... We were just the creative, you know, we, we, we were like, hey, these are cute scent names for the bars and things like that. But we really had no strength in, like, the business part of it. And what was cool with um, Orville and Heidi is they actually took Scentsy, they joined the DSA, which is the Direct Selling Association, um, which any, you know, legitimate um, direct sales company is, is part of that. And... Um, they made it official. They came up with the compensation plan. Um, so, so people join for the $99. They get all the kit to start, and then they can do parties. And um, when hostesses do a party, there's, like, rewards that they give. So they came up with, like, all of that plan. And then as far as, like, moving up ranks, you know, and, and all of that, ours was like, yeah, you want to sell Sensi? Okay. You know, like, we just really didn't have... So... Um, I think when you, like a good time to, to know when to turn it over is when you see your, you know, your strengths are not enough to, to get it to that next level. In the back. Ooh, good question. Have you run into any problems with people trying to copy your idea? As many of you have probably seen, and we just had a question in the front here, are you the one in, in this area? There have been some copycat <laughs> um, people that have, have joined or have tried to copy the idea. Um, it's funny because, like, I think Better Homes and Gardens now has a, a wickless candle. And people will come. It's very interesting. The um, original customers of Scentsy are very protective of Scentsy. And so they'll come up like, oh, my gosh, you know, did you see Better Homes and Gardens? And I'm like actually like that is quite a compliment like better homes and gardens liked our idea like that's so cool um the the thing for us we did have actually a company that had come in and um, they asked for a tour of the home office they like got all the insider information and then they went and started their own company and the problem is they copied super close they put our mission statement on their boxes and you know it was so there was a lawsuit um, but the interesting thing we found is they had to send in all of their data of how much they were selling and stuff. And the whole third quarter of the year did not even equal Sensi's one day sales. And so we're like, uh, okay. So anyway, there, there are people, but in my opinion, nobody has met the quality of Sensi. And um, so you may be able to find them cheaper, but... I don't think, and I have had people come up to me at shows like, well, what's the difference in your product and what I can get at Walmart? And I tell them, you know what, here's a bar, go and try one of ours and then try one of theirs and I, I'm giving you this for free. I want you to call me back and tell me your honest opinion. And I've had people join Sensi because <laughs> they're like, oh my gosh, there's, you get what you pay for and there's no comparison. So anyway, there have been other copies, but um, it, it's not, it hasn't hurt us. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah, you said there's two kind of waxes already. I always kind of thought since it was like a new or specific low temperature kind of wax, like you guys have to find or, you know, is it not a low temperature wax? 
so it is, it is, and it's a food grade um, wax, which is interesting. A lot of people like, oh, what if my dog ate the wax or whatever, you know? So, um, but the cool thing about it is there's no combustion going on, right? There's no burning. So really, the wax is just the medium that's holding the oils to. But it's not um, softer than other waxes. I always feel like it melts in your hand. It, and it's it, so low melting temperature. It is a. Um, like a, a softer container wax. That's why we had to put them in the little clamshells, but it's not like a special, you know. <laughs> so, yes. The total value of the company. Ooh, that's a really good question. I know that the annual sales are um, close to 600 million a year. But the, the total sales, Sensi is privately held, so there's no investors. Um, and it is um, basically debt free. So it's in a really good, like, stable position. And I, I forgot to tell you, there are over um, 100,000 consultants that have joined Sensi that are out selling around the world. So, um, yeah, it's. It's solid and it's doing awesome. So the guy that just gave you all those things to do wherever you want, he obviously had the news from me after you realized the success, like, hey, I think his website maybe has little tarts now that can, <laughs> can go in a, a warmer, but no, he really, no, no. What was cool was the, that warmer, I mean, we met with him, but there were several other people that had warmers out there. And um, so that wasn't like a, a special technology. We just kind of took the older, you know, the potpourri idea and married it with the Wickless and, you know, kind of brought those two together. <laughs> How many different candles do you have? Which one is your most popular? Ooh, that's a good question. How many different candles do we have? Which is our most popular? Um, are you talking about the warmers themselves or the scents? The scents. There are over 80 different scents in each catalog. Um, they come out with two, two new catalogs every year, and they switch it up. So spring and summer, they introduce new ones for spring. Not all new, but maybe 20 new ones for spring and summer, and then um, new ones for the fall, winter. Um, it's kind of cool. There are still some of our original scents that are still available, which means they were awesome, right? Um, so like Sunkiss Citrus, Sugar cookie, cinnamon bear, black raspberry vanilla. Um, those are some of the most popular, I would say. And a lot of, well, all of those are ones that were original that Kara and I named. Um, Autumn Sunset is one. There, there's a lot of good ones. But what's cool about it is Sensi really appeals to all ages of people, men, women, um, and so even little kids. And we have lots of different products. Um, little scentsy buddies now that are like stuffed animals that you put a little scent pack in so that they smell. We, um, a year ago, introduced diffusers. So we have where you add water and um, drops of oil and have diffusers. Um, we have um, car candles. Well, there are scent circles that go in your car. And we actually have a little basket in the back for everyone to, to take one of those when you leave. They're awesome. Make your car smell good. Um, tons of different products. So. Uh, it, it's cool because men, women, children, everybody loves things around them to smell good. So it's been a huge blessing for us. Um, probably time for one more question. She gave me the five minute mark in the back. Based off sales. That, yeah, he asked if, uh, about the royalty um, and it's based off sales. So, and it, it just goes for the life of the company. So that's been really fun. One really quick question about the countries outside of the U.S. that are growing Okay, countries outside of the U.S. that are growing the most rapidly for us. Um, right now, Australia and New Zealand are gone crazy. Um, we started the U.K., uh, and that took a little bit longer to... Um, to really start snowballing, but that right now is just going into tornado phase. The UK is, is starting to grow really fast. 
Um, we're also in Mexico, which is, is just starting to, um, to grow faster. It's funny because uh, Guam and Puerto Rico got turned on by accident. That was like a glitch on the system. But we have huge teams in both of those places. In fact, in Puerto Rico, there was this cute little mom. She didn't own a car. She was um, like a, a, a single mother. And um, she actually would take a little covered wagon with the Sensi in it and go door to door. She is now a superstar director and is doing very well. And that was in Puerto Rico. So it's been so exciting to see these people and see the stories and, and meet people who their lives have totally changed because of a $99 starter kit. So it's been very cool. <laughs> I want to thank you for coming today. Let's hear a great big round of applause. I'll just take this. Thank you. So, the little box is on this chair by this door, right on my half of the That's auditorium here in the back. Please. So, as you leave, please go ahead and grab one of those, what are the scent circles? What are they called? A scent circle, if you can grab one of those on your way out. Guys, my wife told me they have camping trailer, not diffuse, warmers. So if any of you guys are feeling left out, apparently you can get a camp trailer warmer to warm your, to warm your s'mores and uh, campfire scented wax. <laughs>